Hello everyone and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Solving Donor Retention with Approved Affinity. I'm your moderator Zoe Fernandez from Merkel's marketing team. To lead today's webinar, we are joined by three industry experts. First, Darren Jacobi, VP of Constituent Relation Marketing at the National MS Society. Darren leads the Society's work to engage each constituent in the MS movement at their highest level through seamlessly connected constituent experiences. Next, Kroom Lawrence, who is the VP of MS Strategy here at Merkel. Kroom advises US and global marketing organizations on brand leadership, digital transformation, and connected experience designed to drive greater constituent relevance and business performance. And finally, as Director of Analytics in Merkel's nonprofit team, June combines her background of consumer psychology, marketing, statistical modeling, and customer insights to bring clients a constituent-centric approach that is data-driven. Now I'll hand over to Kroom for today's presentation. Great. Thank you, Zoe. This is Kroom, and it's a, it's a pleasure to have everyone on the line. We really appreciate you taking a few minutes today. We're going to be going through some really great material uh, that we think is very, very compelling on the role of affinity modeling uh, as it relates to driving a better donor value. And so uh, I think everyone is, is aware of the significant challenges in the fundraising marketplace today relative to retention and acquisition and this shift to digital, et cetera. Uh, and we, but we believe fundamentally that retention can best be improved by orchestrating the cumulative experience with the, with the organization, uh, that measuring and managing affinity in a holistic way across the organization is really the best way to activate donor relationships and obviously drive fundraising performance. So the key takeaways, and we'll spend the next hour or so going through what affinity is, how it works, and then Darren's going to ultimately provide a, an example from the, uh, from the N NMS Society, uh, will be to really learn how to define, design, and measure affinity across fundraising programs to see the implications across organizational silos and discuss that and identify ways to enhance donor relevance and ultimately drive a performance of our fundraising programs. We're really excited to have Darren here uh, to walk through what NMSS is doing uh, in terms of their affinity framework, and we're just really thrilled to be able to provide you some of that content and some of that experience on the ground uh, through Darren. So thank you in advance for that. A quick definition of affinity, it's really about an attraction or a liking to something. And in fundraising and in marketing, we're really referring to that level of stickiness of the constituent of the organization. But the real question today is, you know, how are we going to measure it and manage it in a better, more holistic way why is it urgent? Like, why now? So we know the historic focus on fundraising has been to monetary giving, but now we really have to take into account how constituents are deriving greater value from their holistic experience with the organization. And, and for us at Merkel Nonprofit, we're focused on a people-based marketing approach that really helps us look across organizational silos and look across the entire donor experience to make sure we're maximizing value across that journey and using that insight and using new capabilities and technologies to actually deliver on a, on a better differentiated experience that ultimately leads to better fundraising um, as, part of, as part of the core mission. We know everyone is faced with lots of challenges in the fundraising market. Here are three things that we think of as, as part of the case for focusing on affinity as a solution. And, you know, the first on the left on declining donor engagement, I think everyone is, is largely aware of the challenges in ac of acquisition and retention rates sort of falling over time. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But we know the universe of donor aged uh, people is increasing, yet the pool of qualified prospects is declining and competition for them is intensified. And so lots of nonprofits, most of them, are in this perpetual state of acquisition and really trying to manage the leaky bucket. You know, secondly, we also, you know, are aware of the age of the consumer. You know, the, the rise of digital is now ubiquitous and that every individual is, is constantly taking their unique path uh, to action. Um, and that fragmented media uh, is, is harder to measure and manage, you know, across some more, more complex programs. Um, we know that donors can't be treated like an ATM any longer. They are in much greater control of the content they want to consume and how and when they choose to give. 
And then finally, and third on the right, in terms of for-profit competition, which I think is very interesting, there are a couple of dimensions in here. Not only are for-profit organizations pushing harder into leveraging charitable causes to differentiate, but consumers really expect them uh, to, stand, to stand up and clarify what they stand for. And there's, there's a, interestingly a, a recent e-marketer survey that says that over half of consumers really expect their brands to take on social good activities. So the implications of that is sort of further crowding out or pushing into the traditional space uh, where fundraisers used to play. And then finally, and, and most interestingly, is sort of the overall Amazon effect, you know, simply where this best-in-class retail experience is just soaking up a, a ton of share of wallet. And it's crowding out all kinds of typical spending behaviors and patterns. And not only that, it's setting expectations for what great personalized experiences and interactions should be. So the bottom line here is that there is increased competition. Uh, unusual players are pushing into the fundraising space and they're shaping percep perceptions and you know, potentially crowding out fundraising dollars. So those are some of the things that, that we're thinking of. Clearly, retention has been challenged over time. Uh, we like this quote from Harvey McKinnon, that donor loyalty is not about the donor being loyal to you. It's about you being loyal to the donor. And that really sets up, you know, our overall paradigm uh, in, our, in our marketing approach that helps us really clarify the distinction between traditional marketing and what the future of marketing and fundraising is, and really, and really what has to happen now. So there is a strong sense of urgency of making this shift the traditional sense of selecting a media channel, pushing out an offer, you know, to the target prospect who have the highest campaign ROI, and, and shifting that now to being really clear and focused and having the right data and insights to say we know who our constituents are, who the donors are, what they want, what they care about, what offer they're most interested in, what channels they like, and really then using all the different personalization capabilities we have uh, to, to make that experience most relevant. So now I'm really thrilled to turn it over to June, who's going to walk, who's going to walk us through how Affinity is actually going to make this possible and bring it to life for you on the audience. So thank you, June, and uh, take it away. Great. Thank you, Kroom. So um, our, I'm really excited to talk about how this Affinity framework is being built and how it can, um, how it can allow an organization to have a more 360 view and donor-centric approach to interacting with donors. So with the Affinity Score, we have identified three subcomponents to this score of uh, value, engagement, and retention. And all we mean by value is the monetary value of a constituent, so any kind of transaction giving to um, a direct mail piece, uh, fundraising for an event, all of that goes under value. Uh, the second component, engagement, is any uh, non-transactional um, behavior. So, for example, uh, volunteering or for an event, attending an event, to even smaller behaviors like um, signing up for an email, for example. And then the third component that goes into the affinity score is retention. So how long a constituent has been with your organization and how frequently they're retaining with your organization through behaviors um, and giving. So in this new para paradigm, um, what we're uh, focusing on is a shift to being more co constituent centric, starting with the donor looking at beyond their just monetary support and really looking at them in terms of their uh, behaviors and uh, engagement with your organization uh, outside of just giving. Um, and as a result from this more 360 view of your donors or constituents, we can give them a better experience by tailoring their experience based on their uh, giving behavior, as well as their non-giving engagement. And then you can, uh, this will allow you to then budget based on full engagement of your constituent um, as opposed to just revenue. So I'd like to talk a little bit about how we build the score and um, what kind of data go in, goes into creating the affinity score. 
Like I mentioned, there are three subcomponents. Um, and so the first step, obviously, in this process is gathering and analyzing all of your data. 